on screen here is a guy named Zach Radcliffe. He's a pretty influential kind of evangelical singer type of guy. And he was just charged with some heinous things I want to talk about. I got to ask, why is it always evangelical leaders that are charged? Why is this always the crime they're hit with? I know of one evangelical who wasn't charged with drug use, but, you know, he was kicked out of his church for it. One, every other evangelical that I know of that gets in trouble is somehow linked to a crime. And then there's uh, Ted Haggard, who was caught doing I suppose. So, you know, there's that one. But he was doing it while in bed next to a male prostitute. So <laughs> why? Why always with like this, uh, not crimes necessarily in his case, but the, you know, events, I suppose, whatever. Anyway, uh, check this out. Right-wing Christian worship leader Zach Radcliffe charged with child crimes. October 23rd, 2024 is from Hemant Met on Friendly Atheist. Zach Radcliffe is a 29-year-old graduate of Liberty University. Oh my God a worship director at Oakwood Church in Michigan, a guy who performed original music at the Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC, in 2019. Wow, he is really big to perform at CPAC, a supporter of Donald Trump, of course. That video, by the way, was literally removed from YouTube by Liberty Music Group as I was writing this post, but not before I got a copy of it. Okay, we can't watch it, unfortunately, but this is him performing at CPAC, wow. Anyway, in news that won't be shocking to anyone at this point, Radcliffe just got arrested for sleeping children. Wow, man. Is this it? Is this the a breakdown of the case? Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I, you know, I don't usually pull these things up during streams because sometimes they have, like, social security numbers on them and stuff, but I don't think this one does. Wow, $3 million bail for this guy. Wow, $3 million bail, dude. That's crazy. I bet he can't post bail. I bet he can't make it. I bet he can't get that that money. In West Virginia, at least, I don't know if it works the same way in like Michigan, for example, but in West Virginia, if you have your bond set at three million, you have to either put up a piece of property that's worth three million, or you have to come up with 10% of that in cash. And when you show up to court, you get that back. If the person flees, then the house that was put up is seized by the court, basically, or the car or whatever it is. So 10% of 3 million would be 300,000, right? You think he has 300,000 in cash or even 3 million in assets? I wonder if he's going to get out on bail. Zachary Joseph Radcliffe, this is a quote from an article, was arraigned on two charges of ag aggravated CSA activity two charges CSA activity, and six charges of using the internet to communicate with another to commit a crime. He's facing up to 25 years in prison. Oh my God, dude. 25 years. Good. I'm glad that society will be safe from him. I don't believe that like prison should be retributive. We shouldn't be like looking for vengeance or revenge through the justice system. I don't believe. I think we should be trying to rehabilitate people. We should be preparing them to enter society again and, and waiting until we feel that society is safe from them. That's how I view it. Um, in this guy's case, I don't believe society is safe from him. And I don't know when that would be. Like Josh Duggar. Look at, you remember him? He had some, uh, he had like a bunch of different cases against him of taking advantage of his sisters, I think. And then he got in a bunch of trouble over it. I don't remember exactly what happened. And finally, after all of the heat died down on Josh Duggar, the FBI showed up, seized his computer, brought him to jail. He's sitting in there for like 15 years now or something, or 30, I don't remember, because he, he just kept doing it. People who do this stuff cannot be trusted to not do it again most of the time. So I'm not looking for retribution against Zach Radcliffe here. I'm looking for protection for society. It's actually, this is Hemant Mehta speaking, it's actually much worse when you read the details. Radcliffe has been accused of producing illicit content involving kids stretching all the way back to 2014. Oh my God, bro. He's being held on a $3 million bond in the Washtenaw County Jail and is set to appear in front of a judge on October 31st. Wow, man. All right, you know what? I'm just going to play it. It's three minutes, 40 seconds. I'm going to let it play through. I still stand for the flag, for the red, white, and blue. 
I do it to respect the sacrifice for truth. And I still go out of my way. He's got a very country voice. I'll give him that. Shake a veteran's hand and tell them thank you. Antic says stub sack. <laughs> no, thank you, sir. And well, the pledge of allegiance is hanging on my wall. I say it every day for those who gave it all. He says the Pledge of Allegiance every day for soldiers. What nation under God can you hear it? It's freedom's call. Look at what is this? Is this a mandolin or something? What's this tiny little instrument here? Anybody have any idea? I love it. Raven's truth. Shameful knowing he is a diddler. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget that. He's saying the Pledge of Allegiance for those who gave it all and then getting on his computer and diddling. Let's go. So I still stand for the flag when I see old glory flying. I still fall apart at every moment of silence. I fall apart at every moment of silence. This is hyper-nationalism. This is the kind of sh that led to World War II, seriously. This is what led to it, right here. For the moms and dads, the sons and daughters, the brave who aren't coming home. For their honor and for this land, I'll stand. Now for the soldier overseas, who's feeling all alone. For the veterans who have come back. Feeling lost at home. Well, they have a voice and they're crying out. Well, can you hear them? I can hear them. So I still stand for the flag. Okay, so it sounds like his chorus is just stand for the flag, say the pledge, so on and so forth. Can he can you hear what? Feeling lost at home. Well, they have a voice. And Who has a voice? Overseas, who's feeling all alone? Or the veterans who have come back? Oh, the veterans feeling lost at home. Right, the veterans, the veterans. They they feel lost at home. I see. Well, they have a voice, and they're crying out. Well, can you hear them? I can hear them. So I still stand for the flag. When I see old glory flying. Okay, so it sounds like this song is just, there's nothing like egregious about it. It's just really, really, really nationalistic. Not patriotic. I'm patriotic. I believe in the country. I would fight for the country. I believe in the city that I live in and my community, and I love it. That's patriotism. This is nationalism. Two different things. If you're unfamiliar, nationalism is not just love of your country, but a belief that you uniquely have a right to rule. It's usually coupled with another word like Christian nationalism, white nationalism, or whatever, even black nationalism. White people have a unique right to rule and others do not. There's probably, I don't know that this is a commonly used term, but male nationalism is fairly common in society, I'd say, right? belief that only men should have the right to rule in the country, that's nationalism. If it's not paired with another word, then it's just countrywide. So United States nationalism, that they believe that the US is the only legitimate country in the world, the only legitimate government. Every other government should be taken by the United States, basically, or taken advantage of at the very least. This is nationalistic nonsense, not patriotism. By, by the way, the one famous nationalistic country was Germany. They're probably most famous for it. Flying, I still fall apart at every moment of silence for the moms and dads, the sons and daughters, the friends who aren't coming home. For all the sons and daughters who aren't coming home. Well, for their honor and for this land. I 
And that same flag is at the soldiers' graves. It's voting for their families and the sacrifice they paid. Why is it that I can only hear his voice? And it, it sounds like all of the instruments are just like a mashup of everything all crammed together. I can't pick out individual instruments at all. That's weird and unusual. It's voting for their families. Like what, what chord is he even playing? I can't even tell what chord he's playing. Is it just poor video quality? What? I don't know. It's voting for their families and the sacrifice they pay. Now this country, she ain't perfect. Some things have got to change. But there's no flag I'd rather stand for. No! And no pledge I'd rather take. So I still stand for the flag. When I see your glory flying, I still fall apart. At every moment of silence, for the moms and dads, the sons and daughters, the brave who are coming home. Well, for their honor and for this land, I stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Oh, is he going to say the Pledge of Allegiance in a song now? of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Come on, you better believe it! Wow, man, yeah. Bad mixing, as um, Haunted Shadows Legacy points out. Bad mixing, yeah, absolutely. It's just piss poor audio production. I understand that that comes with doing a live show sometimes, but they should have done better than that. At any rate, um, he's got a really beautiful voice. It's too bad he used that voice to entice children. He knows how to play the guitar, seemingly, and he's got an interesting mix of instruments here, if you notice. He had a keyboardist, a drummer, had multiple guitarists. He has an acoustic and an electric over here. And I, I don't know what this is, a mandolin? That one dude? What, what did that one dude have? There. What, what is, is this a mandolin? Is that what that is? Again, I couldn't pick it out. Oh, yeah, and the violin in the back. I couldn't pick out individual things, unfortunately. But, yeah, I mean, as far as country songs go, I suppose it's pretty run-of-the-mill. It's okay. It's of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Come on, you better believe it! Make a noise and hear it Fascinating. Wow. And there's some poor fool standing in the background there with his hair parted in the middle. <laughs> I don't know who the hell that's supposed to be. Oh, yeah. And on the left here, we've got Jerry Falwell Jr. Oh, man. You guys remember him? Jerry Falwell Jr.? Famous for running Liberty University after his dad died, Jerry Falwell Sr. You know, Jerry Falwell Sr. was obsessed with, like, gay people, said that 9-11 happened because gay people exist in America and abortionists and blah, blah, blah. and uh so Falwell senior dies and Jerry Falwell Jr there takes over Liberty University and then it's revealed that he was basically sitting in the corner like watching somebody do entertaining activities with his wife while he sat over there he planned these activities out for his wife and another person that he would sit there and watch now I, you know be my guest if that's what you want to do i have nothing against that it's just an odd thing for a an evangelical to do. And his wife. I thought they were into monogamy, you know, evangelicals, but okay. How is it that this guy is still up here at CPAC and isn't like, you know, booed off the stage after all that? You know why? Because evangelicals don't give a sh about any of that morality stuff that they preach about. If they did, they wouldn't be voting for Donald Trump. They wouldn't be, they wouldn't have people like this guy on stage. I know that the allegations of diddling didn't come out until recently, but there are an awful lot of people who get caught doing that in the Christian world. And they just, you know, practically don't face consequences at all. You know, this is a, an issue in every demographic of people, every demographic, atheists, 
uh, Christians and um, Buddhists and Muslims, everybody has this problem. Some percent of the population takes advantage of children. What I have a problem with is the fact that these groups, you know, uh, Liberty University and um, specifically the Catholic Church is bad about it, Jehovah's Witnesses and others, move people around to protect them from prosecution. Lie, cover it up, don't say anything. They avoid the police like the plague. I, that's what I have a problem with, really. Report people to the police if you find out about this. Why are you covering it up? It makes you look terrible. You think you're saving yourself from a scandal? No, this is worse. That's the problem. It's not that they find these things in their ranks. It's what they do when they find it. Anyway, let's keep reading Hemant Mehta's thing here. It says, um, Liberty University has now deleted the page touting his CPAC appearance and the church's homepage now includes a giant, we know exactly why you're visiting our website disclaimer. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Look, this is Liberty University's thing, I think. Oh, fascinating, dude. We received some very disturbing news about our music and youth director, Zachary Radcliffe, who's also the son of our senior pastor, Frank Radcliffe. Oh, oh boy, that's not good. We realized while talking to him that there was more to the situation than was being expressed. They realized that simply by talking to him? He was suspended with pay on October 3rd, pending further investigation. More information was given to us on Saturday, October 12th at 4 in the afternoon. Pastoral staff met with our church that evening and Sunday morning. Zach was terminated from his job without pay, effective Saturday, October 12th. The state police were notified by families that were involved and our church staff. Good, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm happy about that. They did the right thing, it sounds like. We're not aware of the full extent of his crimes, and we are doing everything we can to cooperate with the ongoing police investigation. If that's true, I'm happy about it. But these people have a habit of, like, lying about it, you know, and covering this shit up. So I'm hesitant to believe it. The information we received was shocking. We were told that Zachary had been soliciting inappropriate photos and possibly videos from teens. Oh, my God. We've also heard other stories. This information's ripped our hearts apart. The safety and protection of the individuals in our church is what is paramount to us. We're devoted to doing what we can for the care of the victims of these crimes. Every one of our staff members and individuals working with our children, teens, and adults go through background checks. We do our level best to make sure all are protected. Like, all this sounds good. I love it if it's true. But Jehovah's Witnesses and Catholics and, and every other religious group out there practically, they say all of this stuff too. Their actions and their words are incongruent. Is that the right word? They're in conflict with each other. We have counseling that's being set up and provided for any youth or adults who've been impacted by this crime. What's being, wow, it must have been on a massive scale if they're setting up like counseling services for youth and adults affected by it. That's crazy. How many did this happen to? What's being done will be provided to our church family in the next few days. Like you, our hearts are broken. We have a desire to serve our master in this community with the understanding that the church family should be one of the safest places we can be involved in. Part of that trust has been broken. Our commitment is to be completely transparent and to do what we can to help with this investigation. If you have any information to help the investigation, contact Sergeant Dan Druyer, Michigan State Police, Brighton Post. Wow. Fascinating stuff. It sounds like he's, sounds like he's effed in the A pretty much. I don't see how he gets out of this. This is Hemet Mehta speaking. The church added that anyone with more information should contact Michigan State Police, which is the least they could do. Certainly, the staffers at the church can't be trusted. The kids would have been infinitely safer listening to drag queens read stories at libraries than attending youth group at this church. Yeah, absolutely. And also, kids are not forced to attend Drag Queen Story Hour. Literally no kid in existence has been forced to attend that in the United States. I would put money on it. Certainly not to the degree that church kids are forced to attend, right? Much more optional for Drag Queen Story Hour. This is Hemant Mehta again. The timeline here is also interesting. The website says the church learned about the allegations earlier this month and suspended Zach with pay on October 3rd. On the 6th, Frank Radcliffe delivered a sermon, his dad. The series was ironically titled Not Today, Satan, in which he said nothing about the allegations at all. He ended the sermon by telling the congregation, we always finish a service with song. We're not going to do that today. We always finish song by hearing Zach tell us to go be the church. Go be the church. Give somebody a hug. Oh, so Zach 
usually plays the song or play i'm sorry plays the uh, church out i guess plays at the end of the service that's interesting um well if they were investigating then i understand discretion while they're at investigating and i guess they supposedly did the right thing by turning it over to the cops unless the cops already knew i don't know so that's something what's this oh this is the dad's sermon amen we always finish the service with song. We're not going to do that today. We always finish the song by hearing Zach tell us to go be the church. Go be the church. Give somebody a hug before you get out of here. You're dismissed. Wow, fascinating. The sermon dated October 20th, given a week after Zach was terminated from his job, quote unquote, included no mention of him at all. Interesting. Well, I mean, it feels like they should have informed people long before now for their protection, right? It's not clear if they had a service on October 13th. No video of, his, of it is on their YouTube channel, though service is listed on the church's calendar that day. This is a family, though, that has delivered many messages trashing all things liberal. At the height of the pandemic, when people were literally avoiding going outdoors as much as possible, Zach Radcliffe led church members in a downtown maskless sing-along that marched to a local cemetery. Big surprise. And in 2022, in an interview with Christian radio host Chris Iote, I guess, Zach's father, Frank Radcliffe, went off on the supposed immorality of the left. Okay, this is a quote, I guess, from the interview. Iote, then you have this gender identity ideology, which is from the pit of hell because it's confusing our children. I'm just going to quote the bolded pieces of this interview. We're going to enable and reward gender dysphoria. I think as Christians, we should be able to speak the truth in love, should we not? Frank Radcliffe says, I believe so. Sometimes that means sitting down and saying, this lifestyle that you're choosing is immoral, it's wrong. Instead of sitting down and looking at little people that we don't, that we won't allow. Oh my God, I can't, what is this sentence? Why is this so hard to read? Am I like having like a seizure? Instead of sitting down and looking at little people that we won't allow them to have a drink, we won't allow them to smoke a cigarette. We won't allow them to do all these other things, but we'll literally do child abuse on that kid. I assume they're talking about being trans. I don't know. Our whole church is looking at each other saying, it's my job to love on you. And it's my job also every once in a while to take you out to the woodshed and spank your butt. Why to the woodshed? I know that's a saying, but why do people take them out to the woodshed? You know, a lot of people just like grab a switch and just, you know, hit the kid with it like a very thin branch that leaves like open wounds on you or or a belt it's common why the woodshed that's weird this is Hammett Mehta even if you ignore the inadvertently awkward phrasing at the end during that segment of the interview Zach can be heard multiple times chiming in with words like right and yep he's fully invested in treating trans people as immoral even though he knew he was the guy children needed to avoid the same people who condemn trans people in the name of denouncing immorality ignored the sex predator sitting right next to them. And the sex predator may have gotten away with his alleged crimes for years, largely because he was protected by the shield of Christianity, which gave him access to children along with unearned levels of trust. It's always the ones you absolutely expect. And here's a glowing picture of Zach Radcliffe wearing a Make America Great Again hat and a Trump shirt. Oh my God, bro. That That's just... It's always the ones you, you expect, as he said. That is something else, man. At least he was caught. I don't know if Liberty University or, or the church affiliated with it or whoever he was with, I don't know if they reported it. I would like to think that they did and that their hand wasn't forced, but something tells me their hand was forced when the families decided to report it. Just wild stuff, man. So, yeah, it looks like the Michigan News reported on it. He's arraigned on a charge of first degree criminal sexual conduct, two charges of aggravated CSA activity, two charges of CSA activity, and six charges of using the internet to communicate with another demon. How many is that? Is that like 12 charges or something? Are they all on different kids? I assume. Well, like I said, good. I'm glad he's, I'm glad society's being protected from him. Let me know what you think about it in the comments.